America weighs in on election night 2020, with results still too close to call in some states, while the electoral tally climbs in the race to the White House. And what's passing and what's failing as we track the big issues on your ballot impacting San Diego. Plus, what's to come in the days ahead as legal challenges are sure to mount regardless of the outcome. News 8 starts now. Tonight, the candidates are locked in a tight race for the presidency as electoral votes tick upwards on both sides. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The election at this point is still too close to call. We have team coverage tonight with our reporters in the newsroom and across the country following the most important races up and down the ballot. We start with the latest from the presidential campaigns as results continue to pour in from around the nation. Natalie Brand and Michael George report. CBS News projects President Trump has won the battleground states of Florida, Ohio, and Iowa. The president tweeted, we're up big, but they are trying to, quote, steal the election. Twitter has flagged the statement, saying it might be misleading. <laughs> Earlier, the president talked about his chances of winning as he visited campaign headquarters in Virginia. I think we're going to have a great night, uh, but it's politics and it's elections, and you never know. Winning is easy. Losing is never easy. Not for me, it's not. President Trump looked for big turnout from his supporters at the polls today. I like the course we've been on. Keep our taxes low. Uh, I don't believe in socialism or communism. Early exit polling revealed supporters of President Trump are more concerned about the economy, even over COVID. The president is hosting invited guests at the White House for his election night party. Among those here tonight are cabinet officials. I'm Natalie Brandt in Washington. I'm Michael George at the Biden campaign headquarters in Wilmington, Delaware. Senior Biden officials say they're confident he's going to win, even if it takes a while. Former Vice President Joe Biden addressed supporters at his campaign headquarters. We feel good about where we are. We really do. I'm here to tell you tonight, we believe we're on track to win this election. CBS News projects Joe Biden has won a number of states, including New York, Massachusetts, and California, picking up the Golden State's 55 electoral votes. A CBS News exit poll finds a majority of voters think the U.S. efforts to control the coronavirus are going badly, which may help Biden. There's no justification for all the negligence that has gone on for the last four years. A CBS News exit poll also finds independent voters broke for Biden in a big way, 17 points higher than for President Trump. I'm Michael George at Biden headquarters. Now back to you. We've been tracking results as they've been reported all night long and getting reaction from News 8 political analysts Laura Fink and Wendy Patrick. They join us now with more on what we're seeing play out across the country tonight. And speaking to that, I just want to start off by asking you about some comments the president made, which were just alluded to in those reports. This isn't quite how democracy works, that you can sort of stop uh, the vote count when you're ahead. I just both of you, I'll start with you, Laura. Yeah, that, I, I, I think that's right. And this is a tactic that Trump has employed, you know, in the weeks leading up to the election is, is questioning the result. He said he would declare victory on election night. And it, it appears that that's a form of what he is doing. And that what that does is that undermines what we know we knew was going to happen, which is we knew that votes would continue to be counted because of the mail-in ballots, because of, elect, you know, of, of the fact that not every vote uh, is able to be processed right away. That's true in every election cycle. This is a close race. That means those votes are more important. We have to look at them uh, more carefully. But undermining the election is something that President Trump does as a strategy. And the problem with that is it undermines our democracy as a whole, because we all know that every vote should count, whether you know, you're know you counting them on election night or if there are some left over the next day. Uh, Wendy, uh, and is he undermining any potential legal argument he may have or giving ammunition against people going in court against him by repeating these false claims over and over is he is he hurting himself and also his legitimacy moving forward yeah, two-part question, both parts very important. Um, first, I think he's probably more likely setting up some kind of a legal challenge. We know this because he's already said similar things in the past, given his 
a distrust of the uh, way the balloting, the, the mail ballots go, um, to be distinguished from absentee balloting, which of course is what he does. But secondly, and more importantly, I think he has to be careful what he says, because I do agree, you know, there, there's a credibility element. I think he's frustrated. He's had a long night. Um, I don't think he expected to be as close as it is. And I think when he took the stage and made the remarks that he did, we have to sort of look at and listen through a lens of frustration. I think more telling was what he said earlier when he said, I'm not good at losing. <laughs> so if we sort of translate a bit of the rhetoric we heard from him tonight, we'll probably get a better picture of what he really means. I think he too, in the end, wants every vote to be counted as well. All right, Wendy Patrick, thank you to you and Laura Fink. We're gonna have you guys join us again in the next half hour. Thanks for your time. Well, in the race for mayor of the city of San Diego, News 8's LaMonica Peters will be joining us with a comment from Councilwoman Barbara Bree in just a little while. But we begin now with News 8's Brandon Lewis, who is live in Mission Hills, where Todd Gloria also just spoke to supporters as we continue to learn the results. Brandon. Uh, Barbara Lee, Todd Gloria stopped just short of declaring victory, just as Barbara Bree earlier in the night stopped just short of conceding this race. However, Gloria did thank his supporters and spoke about his plans and his vision to tackle some of the top issues facing our city, including homelessness, affordability, and mobility. They are lofty goals, but my uh, belief is that we've been playing and aiming too small for too long. Uh, and that simply by acknowledging these actual challenges uh, that we can make a lot of progress. Gloria currently has a commanding lead, but we've seen Bree before in the primary chip away at things. Now, while the public polling showed a lot of uh, undecided voters going into today, we're told Gloria campaign internal data suggested most of that was going to tip Gloria's way, and it appears it did so far tonight. Now, if he does win, he would inherit a city that's going through change and facing several challenges on top of the global pandemic. And we will systematically address these priorities and challenges that we face. This work will not be easy, but nothing in my life has ever been easy. Breaking the barriers that we're breaking tonight have not been easy, but we're getting them done. I'm grateful for the confidence San Diegans have expressed in me tonight. Now, over the next few days, they will continue closely watching these results and, of course, making plans for the future. We asked Gloria tonight if he had some ideas for his first 100 days in office. He says he has many ideas and continue talking about some of the issues that we talked about tonight. Of course, not all the ballots are counted, and they are sort of pairing things until that happens. We'll go ahead and things back to you guys. All right, thanks, Brandon. And Todd Gloria is up against City Council President Pro Tem Barbara Bree. It's been a fierce battle. News 8's LaMonica Peters joins us now live from North Park, where Bree's camp was watching the results. LaMonica, what was the mood there tonight? Well, the mood was uh, somewhat somber, but when I spoke to Bree about the mayor's campaign that she ran, she told me that she was pleased with it because a lot of people doubted that she would even make it on the ballot tonight, but she did do that. It just didn't turn out the way she hoped. Now, after months of campaigning, she came out around 820 tonight and she told the crowd that she had heard the early results, which showed that Gloria was up 57 to her 43%. And she told them that she still wanted to be a part of the change happening in San Diego, and she still wanted to hold city government accountable. She also told them that uh, San Diego will still face a lot of difficulties, and here's what she had to say about that. One of the major reasons I ran for mayor was I'm thinking about the next generation and what this city can be for them. And I know that what we're doing isn't working that we have to think in new ways if we're going to build a city for our children and our grandchildren. And as an entrepreneur, I've had to think in new ways my whole life. And the city of San Diego is going to have to do the same if we're going to have a path forward for our future. Now, Breeze Camp told us that she wouldn't be giving any more interviews tonight or tomorrow, so she thanked her family, she thanked her supporters, and all of the people who worked on her campaign. Carlo, Barbara Lee. All right, LaMonica, thank you.
And we did not forget about Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis tonight. <laughs> Poor thing, she's been here a while. She's got your microclimate Hours. forecast. And the warm up on the way, it's not just a hot political contest, Carlene. No, not at all. We're talking about hot temperatures that look to return. So we had great weather for today, especially because temperatures dipped a little bit with the onshore flow that picked up. So that is the forecast we had for voting today in person. But then by tomorrow, we are talking about much warmer temperatures. So we had a lot of 80s that were taking over the inland valleys. We were into the low 80s for the most part. 90s returning by tomorrow. 92 degrees Escondido. 80s right along the coast. Also 94 degrees. That could be a record for Borrego Springs by tomorrow. Why are we warming up? Because we have Santa Ana winds look to return. So it's going to bring in the heat as I'm talking about with temperatures well above seasonal starting by tomorrow peaking on Thursday. We are looking at record breaking heat that looks to return over the next couple of days. So the Santa Ana winds do look to develop by tomorrow night all the way into Thursday afternoon. Now it's not going to be a very strong event like we've seen gusts all, all the way up to about 80 miles per hour. With this one we are talking about gusts into the 20s for tomorrow peaking right along the coastal mountain slopes in the foothills as well as them peaking at about 35 miles per hour and that would be on Thursday before everything starts to calm down and we have a big cool down to talk about in your complete forecast coming up. Carlo, Barbara Lee. All right, thanks, Carlene. Straight ahead tonight, live from the 50th District with the race to fill Duncan Hunter's former seat. But then how police are getting ready for safety ahead of potential demonstrations as results trickle in. We'll be right back.